to order the executive committee meeting for Friday, uh, September 14th. Uh, we do have a quorum. We'll move to, this should be a fairly short meeting, but uh, we'll move to item number one, which is the approval of the meeting minutes for July 13th. Are there? Second. Yeah, there's been a motion for approval from Mr. Voss and second from Ms. Cole. Is there any further discussion? Please vote. Well, thank you. Are we working? Yeah. 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 Please. All right. Okay, finally. Good, 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 good. good. We're good. Voting is closed and that passes. Thank you very much. Are there any uh, uh, public comments or uh, speakers from the no, no public? public speakers. I see no public speakers, so we'll close item number two and move to reports. Our first item is number item number three, the review of the draft board agendas, and we'll ask Victoria to give us that. Good morning. So on your September 28th draft board business agenda, you have the first item, which is approval of the minute ma meeting minutes, followed by public comments and actions from policy advisory committees. Under the consent calendar, we have item number four, which is approval of proposed solicitations and contracts, and at this time we know of one. Under item number five are um, two SB1 um, pass-through grants for North County Transit. Uh, we're looking for an adopt. Item number six is the Sandag 2018 Title VI program update. We do this every three years. Item number seven is the Transit Asset Management Plan Regional Targets. This will be coming up through the Transportation Committee last week. We'll be looking for an approve. Item number eight is the Go By Bike Mini Grant Program. This is final approval of the um, evaluation criteria. Item number nine is your standard matters, oh, no, matters to be communicated according with the um, auditing standards that are required. Item number 10 and um, 11 and 12 are your standing items on report summarizing delegated actions taken by the executive director, followed by report on meetings and events on behalf, uh, attended on behalf of SANDAG and then um, the quarterly progress report on transportation projects April through June 2018. <coughs> Under the chair's report, we have item number 13, which is the iCommute Diamond Awards, and there'll be a reception earlier in the morning for the employers that are being recognized. Item number 14 is the appointment of the nominating committee for the Sandag board officers. The chairs um, will uh, name members to the nominating committee under this item. Um, under reports, we have item number 15, which is the proposed final 2018 RTIP program. This was presented as a draft and now will be coming to you with for final um, adoption. Uh, item number 16 is the Transnet Program Health Report. This is requested by board leadership and it will provide an update on the Transnet major corridors and regional bike programs. Item number 17 is the quarterly finance report and annual interest rate swap evaluation. Um, and this will be presented to ICOC and come to the board. And that concludes the 28th um, meeting and we will be um, potentially holding a spot here for uh, a regional transportation plan item related to the concepts. Any comments on that agenda item or that proposal? Okay. All right, so item number 3B is your October 12th draft board policy agenda. We have one item slated for this under reports. It's an update on the regional transportation plan and the board will be asked to be pro to provide feedback on the network comments for inclusion into the plan. Can't all our agendas be like this? Or is <laughs> this is a long one, right? Any uh, comments on that agenda item or that uh, agenda? In approval. There's a motion to approve both items. Second. And there's a second from Ms. Cole. Any further discussion? Would you please vote? We've got, uh, is it still me? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Voting's closed and that passes. <coughs> Thank you very much. <coughs> Move on to um, item number four. Uh, this is the San Diego County Regional Airport Authority 
Sandag Board of Directors Advisory Membership Request. Um, so on June 1st, the San Diego County Regional Airport Authority submitted a letter requesting to be an advisory member of the Sandag Board of Directors. This is shown in Attachment 1. Um, board Policy 4 states that the board can consider adding new regular um, advisory members to the board. It finds that it adds um, the uh, advice would be, um, they would provide additional beneficial advice to, and information to the board and that the information couldn't be provided by an existing <coughs> board member or policy advisory committee, committee member. Um, on page two of this report, it outlines also five criteria that also must be met by the advisory member seeking to um, come onto the board. There are some key considerations that have been provided and uh, the, the airport authority is currently on the transportation committee and um, the airport authority is also the only member of the transportation committee that's not also an advisory member on the board or the board members. So as such, the executive um, committee is asked to consider the proposed addition of the airport authority to the board of directors as an advisory member. This concludes my report and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. Uh, okay, does this request uh, need clarification or should we have anything from Victoria that we want to clarify? I'd just like to speak in support of, uh, of the uh, having the airport on the advisory uh, or in an advisory position on the board. I mean, believe it or not, they're part of the transportation system here in, in uh, San Diego County, and to meet all the criteria as being an advisory uh, uh, board member. And the, the uh, agency actually has uh, land use beyond just Lindbergh Field. The land use uh, authority for just for every airport in San Diego County, uh, including. Uh, County airports, the city airports of Montgomery and, and uh, uh, brownfields, and military airports as well. So the land use around those is critical and critical to transportation. And I'd speak in support of uh, having the airport board as an advisor. I think we as advisory position. We as Sandag have had a lot of discussions <coughs> with the airport uh, because of Harbor Drive and the ITC and everything that is pending. It's uh, uh, we need to be working carefully and closely with the airport as well, and so this might be a, a positive positive step. Uh, Lori? Yeah, I just also uh, ditto to uh, uh, Jim's comments, and you know, as the council member that actually represents the airport, um, it is, I don't know why they haven't been on there earlier, it's such a critical uh, connectivity for the region, and you know, we need, I think, you know, more coordination. I'm glad that they're on transportation. I think um, being on the board is really important as we're growing and so many things are changing there in that in that area. So I think it's really a, a great addition and uh, I don't vote, but I would vote yes. I did. <laughs> yeah, I would just uh, put out kind of a word of, I guess, a caution on, on this one. Uh, as you know, we've had these discussions with a lot of different groups that have wanted to be on the board, and I know we put them on to different like transportation, different and and other areas. Uh, there's probably a lot of agencies that actually have more impact on our transportation than the airport does. Uh, probably the one that has the most that I can think of off the top of my head would probably be the Board of Education, uh, which has a lot of jurisdiction on on a, land, a lot of land use, but even more so, all you got to do is see a day that school is not in session, and you see our transportation changes drastically uh, throughout our region. Uh, so, you know, it's, I think we uh, uh, need to take care when we start taking a look and when we start adding on, I know we went through the same thing with the uh, Indian tribes and dealing with uh, their situation and, and a whole bunch of other ones. And as much as you want to be very inclusive, uh, you don't uh, don't necessarily want to be a, a skag either, and have to use a, a, a stadium to have your meetings. Other comments or discussion? I would move that we recommend to the board that uh, the airport authority is added as an advisory member. Mr. Voss, uh, as a motion, is there any is there a second for that motion? I will second that. Um, President Cole seconds. Is there any further discussion? Do uh, repeat the motion, Steve. That the executive committee recommended the board that the airport authority be included as an advisory member. <coughs> okay, uh, with 
no further discussion, please vote. I'm trying. Come on, Terry. I'm trying. <laughs> Voting is closed and that passes. Thank you very much. Uh, item number five is our Service Bureau status report and uh, we'll ask Cheryl. Good morning. Good morning. So today's report is the year-end Service Bureau report for fiscal year 2018. As you know, the Service Bureau offers a wide range of customized data and reports for public uh, agencies, member agencies, and other private organizations within the uh, region. These office services are offered on a fee-for-service basis. The idea is to generate revenue to help enhance what we call the regional information system, which is all of our computer hardware, software, computer models, transportation models, data that go into establishing the foundation for the work we do here at the agency. So the executive committee has established a regional information system enhancement fee over and above project costs for this purpose. Table one, which is shown on page two of agenda item five, it's actually page 17 of your tablet if you have those, but it shows the financial performance of the service bureau. Service Bureau brought in revenues of about 531000 from projects that we worked on during the fiscal year. Total expenses, which includes the non-project management related costs, uh, were $501,000, meaning revenues exceeded expenses by about $30,000, or 6.1%. That's um, in line with previous years. Also approved as part of the fiscal year 18 budget, uh, $71,490 in Service Bureau net assets were used to purchase economic and transportation modeling data that are essentially reinvested back into the regional information system. The purchase includes some independent economic forecasts that help us validate the economic forecast for the regional, 2019 regional plan. There's economic impact tool that helps us evaluate the benefit, benefits from transportation investment projects as part of the regional plan. And then also some historical and current um, vehicle travel speed data, which helps calibrate that travel demand model. So those are all good things to reinvest back into the system to improve our processes in the agency. In terms of our projects, we worked on about 52 projects during the fiscal year. The projects are grouped by age or category in the table. The largest revenue generating category is our feasibility studies and comprehensive plans. Uh, we completed a parking study for the city of Carlsbad and just last month, we wrapped up a transportation demand management program for the city of Carlsbad as well. In addition, staff worked with the County of San Diego on a high-level feasibility study for constructing the Skyway from the San Diego Convention Center to the San Diego International Airport. Transportation modeling services is the mainstay of the Service Bureau. Um, more than 80% of our projects are in this category. Uh, we worked on some larger projects to help the jurisdictions, uh, including the a couple of community plan updates for the city of San Diego and a corridor study for the city of Oceanside. We also provided transportation modeling services for a number of development projects, such as North Harbor Drive mobility study, um, San Diego International Airport Terminal 1, Downtown Skyway, we did some modeling for that one, and also several housing commercial development projects around the region. Uh, there's another category on the table called Other Services, and this is a project that I've talked about a couple of times with um, this committee. It's a pilot study between, or pilot project really, between the California Coastal Commission and the City of Carlsbad to provide some enhanced services and early coordination services on Carlsbad projects that fall within the Coastal Commission jurisdiction. So the pilot actually ended June 30th, 2018, but we've extended the contract to give the city and the Coastal Commission a little more time to renegotiate and actually extend those services. Uh, customized demographic, economic, and GIS services are also offered through the Service Bureau. And our economic services team actually helped the South County Economic Development Council develop metrics for measuring economic resiliency as part of this effort. Um, in terms of upcoming projects, um, transportation modeling services have been um, pretty steady. In addition, staff began to work on a, another high-level feasibility study, this one for a quiet zone in the Middletown, Old Town corridor of the Los Angeles Rail Corridor. And just uh, one other note, um, at our last meeting in December, we kind of talked with you about certain changes and policy refinements that uh, we were proposing. Uh, they have been implemented now. 
So this two-page standard contract for all service bureau work has been impl implemented as in the, and is in the works. We did end up increasing the fees a bit for the transportation modeling work to ensure all the cost recovery for the additional work that we were doing for that model and the additional quality control work. Uh, the transportation model life cycle has been implemented, which really allows us to retire the older models and focus on maintaining the most two um, projects or uh, models. And we established priorities for the transportation modeling work, keeping in mind that the regional plan is the main focus and that is the first priority as we consider work for the service bureau. So that cons concludes my report and I'm happy to take any questions. So transportation uh, projects are being given priority, is that correct? Um, the first priority is the regional plan. So the second priority will be any kind of project we get from member agencies or government agencies. And third priority would be the, pro the kind of private sector development project. And do we have a significant backlog of waiting projects? No, we don't have a significant backlog right now. Comments or questions uh, for Cheryl? Okay. This is an information. Thank you very much for the report. We appreciate it. Okay, let's uh, move to item number six, which is our legislative status report. And Robin. Good morning. Good morning. So, I have good news. The California legislature adjourned on August 31st. <laughs> 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 We're safe. <laughs> <laughs> The governor has until the end of this month, so September 30th, so to sign or veto you know, any bills that were passed by the legislature this year. Of those bills, there's a few that we're keeping a very close eye on, including Senate Bill 1151, which is the Sand Edge Neighborhood Electric Vehicle Bill. So that bill passed unanimously out of both the Assembly and the Senate. We were very happy to see that. Now we're just waiting to see the governor take action on that so we can start to implement it in the region. A couple other bills we actually spent a lot of time talking about at your July meeting, the MENA bills, Senate Bill 828 and Assembly Bill 1771. Those both also passed out of the legislature. They were significantly amended again um, after we discussed them. So should they be signed by the governor, we'll of course bring an update to you. But included in those amendments was some language that Sandag actually worked with the authors on. We wanted to make sure that if these bills were signed by uh, the governor, and implemented, it would be very clear to everyone that it didn't impact the work that the region has already done on MENA. Meaning there was a lot of conversation in the region earlier this year about what our region-wide number should be, or the determination number. That's already been established. The Department of Housing and Community Development sent us our final number. So we just wanted to make it clear that we would not be starting over the process whether or not these bills go into effect. Both of the authors were very receptive to that, and so we were pleased to see that language added to both bills. And we will continue to keep you updated on the progress of that. In addition to the legislative things that are going on, and as that's wrapping up, regulatory activities at the state level are starting to heat up, actually. So I just wanted to give you a brief update on some of the items that we're following here from Sandag. The first is related to transportation network companies, or TNCs, like Uber and Lyft. Um, for a long time, Sandag and some of our partner agencies throughout the state, like MTC, SACOG, and SCAD, have been trying to work with companies like this to get them to share their information with us. Obviously, our core uh, mission here as a metropolitan planning organization is long-term planning. In order to do effective planning, we need a lot of data, good information, and these TNCs have access to that information. Unfortunately, at this point, they haven't been willing to share that information with us. Um, and so the California Public Utilities Commission, which is the agency charged with oversight of these companies, has put out a proceeding, which is what they call it, and they basically post certain questions about whether or not TNCs should be required to share this information. So Sandek has filed to be a party to this proceeding. We uh, submitted comments saying that yes, we do think this is very important that this information is shared and that agencies like Sandek um, have experience in securing information like this. That's one of the concerns that the TNCs have raised is that we wouldn't be able to protect uh, personally identify, uh, identifiable information. So we've submitted comments. We're actually working with the city of Chula Vista and the city of San Diego as well to become parties to the proceeding as well. And we'd encourage any other local jurisdictions that may like to participate. Unfortunately, to this point, we haven't seen a lot of local voices in the dialogue. It's really been the TNCs and the private sector. So we'd love to get more folks engaged. Um, and similar to that, at the, um, at the PUC, they're also spending a lot of money related to transportation electrification. So when we, when we say that, that a lot of times refers to like electric vehicle charging stations. 
A lot of money is coming <coughs> down from Sacramento to the various regions to support investments like this. As you know, SANDAG also invests in things like this. The California Energy Commission invests in things like this. ARB invests in things like this. So as a regional agency, we're seeing all of these dollars come down, and we want to make sure that we're spending them in the most strategic way possible. So we've submitted comments to the PUC as well, encouraging them to develop a statewide strategy that's founded on all of the other strategies and works that the agencies are doing talk to each other. But most importantly, make sure that these investments are being coordinated with the Regional Transportation Planning Agency. So when sdg &E is coming up with this proposal on how to spend the hundreds of millions of dollars that it may be getting from ratepayers, they're talking to us to make sure that we're all coordinating our efforts in the region. Um, and this is another one where unfortunately we're not seeing a lot of regional voices in the dialogue, so we will be reaching out to your jurisdictions to see if you would like to get involved. That's my update for now. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, and we'll keep you updated. Any questions for Robin? Okay. Yes. Robin. Great presentation. However, I can't listen as fast as you can speak. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so on the electric car bill that was, that was your, you were looking forward to having signed, what, what, what's, can, to give me the gist of that bill. What, what is that? that it's oh, really the, the first the, one yes. you mentioned. The neighborhood, neighborhood electric vehicle bill. So this is the one where you actually have some questions on it. This has to do with neighborhood electric vehicles like Fred, downtown, okay. the electric vehicles that right now can only operate on streets where the speed limit is 35 miles per hour or less. This bill would authorize any jurisdiction in San Diego to develop a plan that could say how those those vehicles could be operated on streets where the speed limit is higher than that. So it's voluntarily, it's not mandatory. <laughs> um, okay, so, so this would, it's another tool in the toolbox to help us kind of meet our GHG targets. Okay, and then on the TNC information that we're trying to get out of them, what, yes. is, what is that? It's, it's like a driver behavior pattern. Where are people going? What are they using these services for? So that we can then use that information to inform our planning of the transportation network in San Diego. That oh, was so more of a tracking of, what, of what's being, where TNCs are, are mainly going. Okay. Don't we have like the Bluetooth information that already you know, gives us that information, gives us that data? No. No, okay. Well, I know at the, at the airport, but I'm glad they're hopefully going to be in an advisory committee. We had issues with the TNCs when they first showed up, and, and one of the things we needed was what type of cars uh, they were coming in and out because we had we mandated all our cabs to you know go to Priuses, and then all of a sudden any and every car can come out of the airport. So we had it, it, issues of trying to get the types of cars and what uh, years they were, and what, as far as the GH, uh, G emissions and things like that. So that was a little bit. So we I don't know you might want to work with some of the airport folks because it, it was a struggle getting that information were you and, and 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 uh, yes we were but it, it wasn't uh, it uh, wasn't easy but uh, it's doable all right okay. thank, thank you. you any other questions for Robin thank you very much we really appreciate it uh, we have no other public comments our upcoming meeting is October 12th at 9 a.m. and if there's nothing else from the committee we will adjourn Executive Committee and we'll see you in a few minutes.